All right, let's end this. The fight against the Orgums and Rom V's tenure come to a close with a battle against Queen Orgum for the salvation of Gotham City. Uh, maybe. It's all right here in our review of Detective Comics number 1089 from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Detective Comics number 1089. Well, here we go. The long night of dismal storytelling is finally over. In typical Rom V fashion, however, the ending gives you plenty of thoughts and concepts, but with a few exceptions, doesn't properly resolve anything. Finally, the real question remains, what was it all for? Before we dig in, let's recap what happened in the previous issue, which is Detective Comics number 1088. Duella Dent activated a series of bombs around Gotham City for no particular reason. The Ten-Eyed Man defeated Shavhod, and Mr. Freeze defeated Niang. With the Orgum plans crumbling around them, Batman confronted the Orgum Queen Doria, now in a sort of demonic, asthma-evolved form, at the exact moment she connected Scarecrow's mind to the Thalamus engine. What does that mean? I don't know, and I don't think anybody else does. All right, so that brings us to the current issue, which is the final issue in Rom V's run, Detective Comics number 1089. Batman fights against the Orgum Queen in her demonic form or state, if you will. To prevent the Queen's paramilitary forces from interfering, Arzen Orgum and Talia al Ghul suddenly show up and unleash the music box that incapacitates the asthma infection in the paramilitary guards. They're down for the count, and now it's just the Queen who's left. Well, here we go. This is some of the stuff that's left over from the previous issues, so let's talk about it. All that pretentious meandering comes down to a basic fight with unclear stakes. Ultimately, the scene makes sense as long as you don't think about it and how it comes together. How did Arzen get to Gotham City so quickly? How did Arzen and Talia know where to find the Queen at just the right moment? Spoiler warning, most of the questions that come up in this review and this issue will never be answered. Elsewhere, Jim Gordon hurries Payne Cardine, aka the Maestro, along to finish a digital composition containing black noise. What's black noise? I'm sure there's probably some scientific explanation for it, but I, I just can't be bothered to look it up. Jim then races to the production studio where we last saw Duella Dent, so Oracle can patch the digital composition into the broadcast signal, freeing all of Gotham's citizens within transmission range from the asthma infection and returning their memory of Batman or something. In fairness, once the sound mechanic got figured out as a way to counteract the asthma, it does present an interesting construct to kind of give some resolution to the story. It's a novel approach and it's a good way to solve a citywide problem at a grand scale with lots of power and energy. The execution of that whole scene is pretty well done. We still don't know and probably never will know what the asthma is, where it came from, or how the Orgums intended to use it to control Gotham, but at least fixing the problem, even if you don't understand how it got created in the first place, is a step in the right direction. Back at the Orgum Command Center, Arzen forces the Queen to pick up a sword and fight him in retribution for the years of lies she told him about his father's death. Catwoman breaks out of the vault instead of into the vault, where Scarecrow and the Thelemus engine are stored, giving Batman the opening he needs to shut down the device before the Thelemus engine fully injects Gotham with Scarecrow's fear. Now getting to Scarecrow and the Thelemus engine is a big plot point in this finale and the method by which Batman gets into the vault makes sense until you realize it actually doesn't make sense. Catwoman gets into the vault by crawling through a very large air duct. If the vault was that easy to infiltrate, A, it wasn't particularly a secure vault in the first place, and B, Batman could have snuck it in himself and saved everyone the trouble of the big fight. Rom B attempts to elevate Catwoman by showing how clever she is by breaking into the vault from the inside out, but ultimately he only succeeds in making everyone else around her look dumb. Talia al Ghul examines the Thelemus engine's controls and concludes it can't be shut down. I don't know why, that doesn't really seem to make sense, but okay. The only option to prevent Scarecrow's fear from blasting out in a pulse that infects quote-unquote Gotham's bones, whatever that means, is to kill Scarecrow. Batman takes a different approach. He forces Scarecrow to look him in the eye, creating an irrational fear of Batman within Scarecrow. When the Thelemus engine activates, a great pulse of fear spreads throughout the city to inject the fear of Batman and Batman alone into Gotham's bones, whatever that means. Now, I'm going to assume if you're within the sound of my voice, you're probably swimming with questions just like I am. 
What does that mean to infect Gotham's bones with fear? Uh, I'm with you, my friend. I, I don't know. It sounds fancy, but it's really a poor articulation of an idea that doesn't quite come together. Batman is told that he can only stop the pulse if he kills Scarecrow. Why don't they simply unplug Scarecrow from the machine? Unplugging Scarecrow might cause some damage, maybe some mental brain damage or something, I don't know. But there's no reason to believe unplugging it would kill him. Ron V again tries to paint Batman into an impossible corner that forces him to come up with a clever way of not breaking his unbreakable rule. But it's a half-baked scenario and it just kind of makes everyone in the room look sort of dumb. Taking a look at the scenario from a different angle, how did Batman know that he could overwhelm Scarecrow with an unnatural fear for only Batman? Why would that be a better alternative? Instead of generic fear, you just get fear of Batman, or fear of Batman to an irrational degree. Wouldn't that Batman fear pulse send people into hysterics every time someone saw Batman or the bat signal? The more you think about it, the weirder and dumber it sounds. The issue ends with a sort of two-part finale epilogue, sort of. The first part is a montage that lightly suggests what happened to all the villains who helped the Cape Crusader in his latest crusade. Mr. Fear may or may not be moving on from his obsession with his wife. Two-Face may or may not be moving to another city. There's a suggestion that maybe he's got Bloodhaven in his sights. Ten-Eyed Man may or may not be losing his obsession with eyes, I think, kind of, sort of, maybe, the way it's played out. And Azrael may or may not be convinced that Batman is now worthy to protect Gotham City, which, not sure that was fully in question in the first place, but okay, let's go with that. And to top it all off, the issue concludes with an intimate chat, which is very sort of cliche at this point, between Batman and Catwoman on a nearby rooftop, expressing unrequited love for each other and talking about how they'll eventually be together one day once Gotham is restored, if that ever happens. All right, let's switch over to the positives and the negatives, starting with what's great about Detective Comics 1089. To be, I would say, generous, the resolution of using the production studio as a mass delivery mechanism to undo the asthma corruption is a smart move, and the whole sequence with Jim Gordon and Oracle is executed pretty well. Action, pacing, execution, that sequence does come together. All right, so what's not great about Detective Comics number 1089 there's just not enough hours to kind of cover it all. But looking at the Orgrim arc as a whole, Rom V's attempt at operatic storytelling is, in my opinion, abject failure. Missteps, misdirects, and just all-around sloppiness. We have a review up on the Weird Science DC Comics site if you want to see all of them. But here are just some of the highlights that are kind of the most pressing, I think, and the most prevalent in this finality. What were the Orgrims planning to do with Gotham City if their plan succeeded? Nobody knows and probably nobody will ever know. What is asthma? And, and where do the organs get it in such large quantities to infect an entire city? What about the organ place? What was it? What was the point of building this building that nobody seems to know what it was? Was it an office building? Was it, a, was it an apartment? What was it? And why did they build it if they just intended to blow it up almost immediately after completion? What is a thalamus engine? How does it work? What is it supposed to do? What happened to all the bombs Duella Dent planted around the city? Did they get them all? What was the point of introducing that problem if he didn't do anything with it? I don't know. I don't think Rom V knows. He just threw it in there to create some tension, I guess. And finally, what is the fate of the Orgum Queen after Arzen defeats her? You see that he restrains her or knocks the sword out of her hand and she's now captured, for lack of a better term. But then what? What do they do with her? What happened with Arzen? All the different Orgums and the, the werewolves and, and the all these people, you just don't know where they went, what happened to them, nothing. Nothing was resolved. When you put those fundamental questions together with the dozens and dozens more that have piled up over the course of this run, you arrive at the same conclusion for every Rom V DC comic. We saw this with Swamp Thing, we saw it with everything else that he's done. Rom V has lofty ideas and big concepts but he doesn't know how to articulate them within the framework of even the most basic and fundamental story. If you can't tell a basic story with a clear beginning, middle, and end that articulates at least one idea in its entirety, you don't belong in comics. That sounds harsh, but this is the circumstance where you've got to get through to the people sometimes because they just either they're not hearing it or they're not being told. May Rom V find a place where he can learn to hone his skills and competence to the level of his ideas because he's not there now 
and I sincerely hope for DC's sake that wherever he hones those skills, it is very, very far away from DC Comics. All right, final thoughts. What do we think about Detective Comics number 1089? It ends the long, meandering Orgum arc and Rombi's tenure on the title exactly as you would expect, with lofty ideas and concepts that rely on superficial tricks and flowery language to mask an inability to execute on those ideas. Most of the big questions created by the Orgums are not resolved, and the arc ends almost exactly where it started. Ultimately, Ron V had nothing to say, and Batman's legacy is poorer for it. Therefore, Detective Comics number 1089 earns a 4 out of 10. Ron V has earned the reputation of the comic equivalent of the Emperor's New Clothes, a sham of the highest order. I mean, there's just no other way to explain how this series turned out. But what do you think? Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this run, and drop a comment below with what you liked about it. Or, if you do agree with me, let me hear about it in the comments. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out all the variant covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.